Hello everybody and welcome to this video where it is Friday the 13th. So we're going to share some Friday the 13th memories here. Friday the 13th was a huge thing for me growing up in the 80s because I was a horror kid and loved horror and loved watching all the old Universal Monster movies and like all the like every Thanksgiving there was a Godzilla marathon as well but like throughout October a lot of those old movies got replayed a lot being an LA kid growing up with Elvira seeing all the really bad movies over and over again I don't know there were a lot of books like when I was a kid that were in like the school library like for those of you who don't know them the Crestwood series where like they would have like little story not story books but they were like going over like the story of the Frankenstein movie in like 30 pages full of pictures you know um, they had that with all of the big um, monsters you know and since a lot of those movies were full of sequels knowing that when i was a kid that there was going to be another friday the 13th movie or another halloween movie or as i got older another nightmare on elm street movie really made that cool you know it was like my own generations and on the live stream last week I talked about like how like Jason was the Frankenstein for my generation and Freddy was the Dracula for my generation and blah, 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 blah. That was really cool. And then the other thing that made that really fun was a lot of people don't realize this, but like Star Wars, when that came out in 77, I was born in 78, but Star Wars coming out in 77. That was like the first movie that came out that had a ridiculous merchandising campaign behind it. And once that showed to be successful, anything that was like an ongoing thing, Hollywood tried to license the fucking hell out of because the like if the movie flopped there was a good possibility that if the marketing for the movie was still good that the licensing agreements would make up for the loss of the box office you had um not so much halloween but um definitely for friday the 13th or for nightmare on elm street but friday the 13th had it too where there was a lot of uh, merchandising around the films and like just with um, like Nintendo like you had the Friday the 13th game which was an awful game and if you understand how the game works like now like the game's actually kind of fun to play but as a kid it didn't make any fucking sense but it was like still exciting to be playing a Friday the 13th video game and they did other games like that, too. I mean, back in Atari days, you had a Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. So just, like, everything from uh, school folders, like, paper document folders, to posters, to um, T-shirts, to dolls, like, all that shit was really, like, happening. And the thing that's crazy about it is is that they were marketing all of these movies that technically none of us kids were allowed to watch, but all of the stuff they were marketing or merchandising these movies about were directed towards kids. And um, so that was really crazy. But, I mean, going to the video store and seeing all the different, like, VHS covers of all these, like, in the horror section... It was something taboo. Like, you knew you shouldn't be doing it. And if you could convince your parents to let you rent one of these movies, it was like a rite of passage. And especially for, like, a prepubescent boy, like, who is, like, enamored 
with what it's like to be a teenager because you have older siblings to like rent especially the Friday the 13th movies and seeing all these like teenage kids who you like look up to as a child like getting in all these like crazy like life threatening adventures and then on top of that like just partying and having fun it was cathartic and a big fucking deal. The other thing that was really tricky too was that a lot of video stores didn't have all the movies. So you would like be at a video store that had like part one and part three, but like you needed to find another video store that had part two kind of thing to be able to watch all of these in order. And because I've always been a nerd like that, like everything has to be in order. Um, but I remember for the longest time, um, this video store that we were going to only had part seven and the merchandising marketing machine behind part eight, Jason takes Manhattan was like a big deal. And I ended up with a lot of, like, I had like folders and pencils and all sorts of like just really hokey shit posters and all sorts of stuff and around this time too my sister was working at movie land wax museum in buena park and they had a chamber of horrors which was awesome and i probably still have a bunch of stuff from there like the postcards and shit like that but they had like a camp crystal lake exhibit with jason and they had a freddy there for a long time until someone from uh, new line uh, saw it and then asked if they had permission to do that and they didn't so they had to take Freddy out which really pissed me off but anyway I digress part 8 was the first one that like I fully remember before it came out and all the stuff leading up to it I don't know why it was probably something to do with me at school but like my parents ended up getting like a subscription to Entertainment Weekly and I remember around that same time, I could be off by a year or two, but like there were ads for Halloween for the return of Michael Myers and all that stuff. And whenever there was like a big horror franchise movie, they would have like full page ads and I would rip those out and hang those up on my walls. But when Jason Takes Manhattan was coming out, it was a really big deal. Probably not for anyone but me. But, like, I, I couldn't see it in the theater, you know, the whole thing. So by the time, because there was a little bit of a lull, because I think a movie came out every year up until that movie. And then um, Paramount let go of the license for it and New Line picked it up. And that's when uh, Jason Goes to Hell, um, part nine, if you are still doing chronologically, came out. And I was 16. I had a car. And um, it was a 1966 Pontiac Catalina. And I could put probably eight people in my trunk and probably ten people in the back seat and front seat. <laughs> so fucking big. And we went to the drive-in to um, see Jason Goes to Hell. And it was fucking crazy. It was so much fun. Like, people, we were, like, hanging out and partying kind of thing. And then people got mad and started, like, flashing their lights and honking their horn at us. And we thought they were just having fun with us. So then I started flashing my headlights and honking the horn. I mean, we were outside dancing on the car and shit like that. We were just so excited. That was at the Highway 39 movie th or drive-in. Um, it's a beach boulevard down by Huntington Beach which obviously isn't there anymore. It's like there's probably like a shopping center or a fucking Whole Foods or something there now. But yeah, and so for years, that was the last... Maybe I was younger than 16. It might have been 14, because I'm thinking of the people that were there with me, and I don't think I was hanging out with them when I was 16. I don't know. There's, there's some weirdness in this story here. Well, that was the last Friday the 13th movie to come out for a really long time, until... Jason X came out and that came out I was bartending and I was working at this bar across the street from a big shopping center in Lakewood or Long Beach some 
I can't remember what side of the street was what city. But there was a Barnes & Noble there and a big AMC movie theater, or Edwards movie theater. I would go to the Barnes & Noble all the time and either buy CDs to listen to at the bar or um, whatever, and I would always check the magazine section. And in the magazine section, I remember seeing that there was talks about Jason in space. And I was like, what the fuck? So I was going, and that was like kind of like the talk of the town for like a year. So like Fangoria, Rue Morgue, um, there was another magazine called like Cinema something. And every month or so, like someone would have some cover story on this movie until the movie finally fucking came out. And I remember I, I was working earlier in the day and I went on opening day to see it. And then I went the next day and I went the next day because I'm like, I don't know how many more Jason films they're ever going to make. And I want to fucking experience this in the movie theater as often as possible until it's not here anymore because like I don't know if I'm ever going to see another one. When Freddy vs. Jason came out, I was living in Costa Mesa and this was before I was married to my first wife, but we were living together. And I took um, my stepson, who was way too young to see it, probably. But I was like, you know what? I was, like, young as shit when I was, like, all into this stuff, so fuck it, whatever. And so I took him to see that, and that was, like, kind of like a dream come true because, like, ever since I was a kid, I would, like, draw, like... Okay, so Chucky's going to fight Pinhead, and Michael Myers is going to fight Leatherface, and then Freddy's going to fight Jason. Like, this was always a thing, and because I loved wrestling as a kid, there was that. And then just, like, growing up knowing, oh, Frankenstein meets Wolfman. Um, Godzilla versus fill-in-the-blank. You know, like, this whole idea of movie monsters colliding was something that was a big deal. And if you remember the end of Jason Goes to Hell, like, they kind of telegraphed that. It, it, it's been something with me, like, my whole life, you know? I just really dug it. And back to Jason X, I'm always kind of bummed out that they never did any movies before. Like, because when we first see Jason, he's, like, in some, like, jail, basically. And that would have been great to have any kind of movies about that. Um, and then what happens after Jason X, that would be great. There were a lot of books written, I think four, um, that either take place before or after the events of Jason X. And I got one of them, and I don't know who the fuck they got to write this book, but it was so painful to read. It was just fucking written so fucking drab. It was, like, written for page count, for sure. Um, so I just never really read any more of those. But then, like, you have, like, those comics, like, um, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. Like, that was kind of, like, a fun thing. And then there were the Friday the 13th comics. I have some of the trade paperbacks of those. But they're not that good. Like, you want it to be good because you want more fandom. But then, like, you, every one of these, they try to, like, kind of change something up in the, like, origin story to, like, make it like, oh, shit, that happened? And all this other shit. And then there was this one um, series, I think it was Jason vs. Leatherface, if I remember correctly. And, like, I have this vague recollection of, like, Jason taking a bus to Texas. It was the stupidest fucking thing I've ever, like, I don't know. I don't remember. If you guys know what I'm talking about, leave it down below. But anyway, so Friday the 13th, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I miss it. A bunch of my friends worked on this documentary years ago called um, His Name Was Jason, which is a pretty good documentary. And then again, um books I would recommend if you don't want to pay for um, Crystal Lake Memories which is a great book it's very like everything you could possibly imagine if you don't want to get that there's a smaller book called um, Making Friday the 13th that is just about basically the first movie and a little bit extra but that's also a really good book 
if you're interested in any of this shit. Um, but yeah, so that is my Friday the 13th memories. Um, what are yours? What was the first one you saw? What was your experience with them? What was the first one? How old were you? And if you haven't watched any yet, what the fuck are you doing listening to me? Stop this and go watch the first one. I would say watch at least the first four. I don't know. Motherfuckers got shit to do. So I'm not going to force it on you. All right. But um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.